God bless you, global Christians and friends across the globe. Pastors, saints, and churches, American people, government. How can there be children that will not hear the law of the Lord? Isaiah 30 and 9. Unity is one of the most important principles of Judaism. Can y'all hear that? It is taught that when all is united with a good heart, it brings great benefit unto us, it is said. Y'all understand that? Is not this the intent of the law of God? The Shema, you know the Shema. I've said it in Hebrew many times. You know what it says. The first of all commandments, Jesus said. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. The Shema. Like, for instance, be gathered together in one place. Remember that statement? Genesis 1 and 9. I will give them one heart. Remember that statement? What nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 8. For a nation to reach forth to those things before it, there must be a day of reckoning for that nation. For the children of Israel, God is the focal point of their day of reckoning. For he said, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. The great signs and wonders God did for them while in Egypt would not be compared with those he would perform after their deliverance from Egypt. God, who is almighty and jealous, will not allow any God or nation of people or anything in heaven or principality to intervene with his rule of his favorite subject. The adversary and the archangel Michael, who is taught that, listen closely, Michael's abode is in the fifth heaven. We've said this before. Maon, M A O N, dwelling within the temple of Maon at the altar within the temple to offer up the souls of those righteous departing from the world. Now keep that in mind. He disputed about the body of Moses, Jude chapter 9. And when the body of Moses belonged to Christ, the creator of all things, Jesus who made all things to hear God's voice out of heaven that he might instruct them. Very powerful understanding that we need to understand. Jesus made them hear God's voice out of heaven that he might be able to instruct them. Jesus made people hear God's voice out of heaven. Yes, he did. The Bible said so. 
All right? Now, saying on one occasion, there are those who did not understand, this voice came. And the Bible said, then that came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it, that he may instruct them in the name of the Father, having knowledge to manifest his name, John 17 and 6, having power to keep in his name, John 17 and 12, and being able to declare his name, John 17 and 26. The word continue and will glorify it again. Now that's found in John chapter 12, verse 28. He said, This came not because of me, but for your sake, Jesus said in John 12 and 30, which means Jesus made God's voice heard out of heaven for your sake. Period. That he might instruct you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. For the sake of the apostles, after the death of Lazarus, Jesus said unto them, And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent. I get the purpose which will instruct their faith. Ye may believe. John eleven fifteen. It is as if it took the resurrection from the dead to ignite the apostles' faith in the Lord or to ignite their faith in God. And we've told you the quality and the possibility of what faith is capable of doing, if you will pay attention, what faith is capable of doing. Incredible knowledge that we've given you already. Now, there was nothing among the ordinary religion, religious practice, coming from the temple worshipers and uh, uh, services, which could have sparked or renewed the apostles' faith. It wasn't there. A practice of faith which others are in control of is not absolute faith in God. Keep that in mind. A faith that you practice that others are in control of is not absolute faith with God. All right? You notice, I don't tell you to say amen out there. Because if God's not in you, it ain't going to happen in the first place. But if it's in you, it's going to come out anyhow. I can't hear it, but God does. We always say amen to the truth, don't we? Now, with such faith practices, God is not absolutely pleased. Who demanded absolution? God demands absolution in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with how much? All thine heart. What else? With all thy soul. What else? With all thy might. Which Jesus said. This is the first and great commandment in Matthew chapter 22, verse 38. The first and great commandment, Jesus said. The first and great commandment is this demand of God. Uh, all right, praise the Lord. Uh, he who command is the same as he who also demands. God bless you until the next time Global Christian friends God bless you pastors, saints and church American people and government